All right. Hey, folks, um, before we start, I just have a quick question. I mean, a little favor to ask you all. So about ye yesterday or something, and Dave always asked me this. Um, He says, Josh, can you come in with a plan for every new episode? Because sometimes we do this banter thing, and it could get annoying to some of the listeners. So because you always say, um, a lot. So if you could do me a quick favor, and I know this is asking you to, like, engage more than usual. But if you hear either me or Dave say, um, just take notes of it and say, how many times does Josh say, um, and like, or David, just like, you know, hit us up and say, hey, hey, Josh, you know, you said, um, 10,000 times, and it's kind of annoying. I genuinely want to know. So, so thanks. All right. And Dave, how are you? I'm good. Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of SLA. Yeah. Um, thanks for asking, Josh. I'm doing good. Um, a, a lot going on down here in Tennessee. How's everything in New York? I mean, rather, rather interesting. Um, we're getting a new governor soon. So, I mean, rather interesting. It's, uh, interesting times in New York. Well, yeah. And, and you did get to interact and meet with, uh, Lieutenant Governor Hochul about less than two weeks before it was announced that she'd become the governor. So that was a pretty exciting moment at, yeah, that, uh, that was pretty cool. at the Nicholas Center and Spectrum Designs. And I, I had FOMO really bad because I missed out, especially because she was there for a grant that I've worked really hard on. Um, oh, that stinks. Yeah, yeah. That but it, it, it's really cool. Um, I had no idea. Like, it was weird. Nobody had, like, I, I don't know, like, we, we don't talk about politics on this show, but, like, this, we aren't talking about this for political reasons. We, we had no idea she was going to become, like, the new governor when this person came. So it's like, oh, cool, the lieutenant governor's coming, like, well, and I'm like, oh, okay. And, like, it was, and I, like, I shake her hand, and I, I didn't know I'm shaking the first female New York governor's hand. I mean, it's just like, oh, so it's just, it's pretty cool. I mean, like, no matter where your politics or anything, that, that's pretty cool like that. This individual who's about to make a historic move in the state comes to your job. Your job. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, not anything nearly as exciting uh, down here, but um, I've been still getting settled. Working from home with, uh, you know, and missing out in person gives me a little bit of anxiety, missing out on the special moments, but also just some logistics and some conversations at our, our companies and things like that. It, it doesn't feel great. I did surprise everybody and come up, uh, surprised yeah. you too, just randomly walked in and saw you, uh, in yeah. person th this month, which was really cool. Yeah. I was uh, just eating my lunch. And I was like, Oh, that voice sounds familiar. Like, what, what are you doing here? Like, yeah, it's I, in Tennessee, like watching the helicopters and planes go over your house. I surprised everybody for a staff appreciation event that we were having uh, at my company. So it was cool to see you. Um, but yeah, working from home here, especially with ADHD and dyslexia, um, getting settled in a new system of work has been a challenge for me. But that's something that I'm a student of and that I teach, um, figuring out work systems and the best ways to uh, be successful and meet your expectations and exceed them and, and your own goals. Uh, so I've been executing on everything really well. Um, things have been exciting. And, you know, speaking on executing on goals, my kid um, started school this week and she hasn't been, she was in school a little bit right before COVID hit, but she doesn't remember that. She was like two, now she's turning four. And so she started preschool this week and um, it was a moment for me. I was really emotional. I took off work to, to bring her to her first day of school. Um, and, you know, just know everybody that there's an entire generation of kids, COVID kids, I'll call them quarantine kids, that, um, I like that COVID yeah. kids has a ring to it. I mean, I really feel for, I feel for everybody, but I feel for all of the, uh, the young people who have missed out on different milestones and also are just like, yeah. you know, less exposed to the outside world only are used to interacting with mom and dad or their siblings. Um, so yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a rocky week, but she did great. She has a good attitude about it. And, um, that's where I'm at this week. Thank God I'm not a kid during this because I'm telling you, like, I'd be sent to my room every day. I mean, I was almost every day because I used to, like, break all the rules in the house as a kid. But, like, every day more than even that, if I were stuck at home like that, crazy, that'd be crazy. Um, yeah. And, but, and you know, 
speaking of of like routines and, and getting back to it, the, things haven't stopped, things aren't closed. Uh, and, and we have to just keep moving forward however we can. And speaking of which, I'd like to, to shout out uh, our really good friend Eileen Carmody from Autism with a Side of Fries, who um, is very involved in the, uh, the world of um, autism and neurodiversity and inclusion um, as from the perspective of a, of a quirky mom, a team quirky mom, as she would say. Um, and she works so hard um, trying to provide, to, trying to pave a, a path of opportunity for her son and um, people with challenges like his. So I just want to shout out Eileen Carmody um, and say I'm wearing her hashtag autism at work shirt. If you watch, if you're watching the video, you could see it. If not, if you're listening, um, it's just an awesome shirt made by Spectrum Designs Foundation that says hashtag autism at work. And that is, um, a, you know, a fundraiser for a program that she's, uh, that she's involved in. Um, the, the name of it, Mount Monmouth County, the name of it is escaping me. Monmouth Ocean Foundation for Children. But a really awesome vocational program that she helps out with. So um, shout out to uh, Autism with a Side of Fries and Eileen, thank you so much um, for, for your support of what we do and for all your hard work in this space. Really, really cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, see, did you catch that? I just said it once. That's the, being born that's, the tally. That's one for Josh zero for me and these are golf rules by the way so points are bad wait golf rules i only do like the golf you know like the golf drive and like mini golf i don't know like in the golf rules i believe in golf the less points you have the worse so i mean the less points you have the better so if you get a point you're not doing you know i'm winning because i have zero okay all right so far dave's winning and i'm not gonna say it count but let's not keep let's not keep track. Let's leave that up to the audience. No pressure, guys. But please count. Keep count. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, that's two. Uh, for, that's two. That's two for. Uh, I'm not. I'm not counting though. I'm not counting. Oh no no. <laughs> All right. So um, before I'll be going any further, I just want to talk about what's New York pretty much like without um, the Dave influence. Uh, <laughs> so I mean. It's it's weird because you know I'm used to if I need to talk to me, the way it was set up, um like at my day job at Spectrum, I was in one building, then maybe literally two buildings down, Dave like had his office there and stuff. So if I need anything, I mean I could always just like run down there. Now it's like the dude's in Tennessee, so it, it's just weird because so I'll text him and it's like it feels like he's down there, but then I go, oh, wait, no, he's like across the country. So it's it's kind of weird. So, I mean, because for years he's been like right there. So it's just, it's, it, it's, it's weird for me too, but um, really we talk pretty much just as much. It's, it's those like, we, we do, it's those do. Quote, quote unquote, like water cooler kind of conversations that you have just because you run into somebody that I'm missing now. But um, I feel just as connected uh, as I was before overall. And I think that, you know, that's the case for a lot of people. A lot of people haven't seen their families that live in other states in two years now because oh, of yeah. this. Um, so, it, you know, this is, I, it's very cliche to say new normal, but this is, this is where we're at. And, you know, silver linings, I know it's difficult, but silver linings, if it proved anything, it proved that, you know, uh, professional, personal relationships can be successful when you're, when you don't see each other in person, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. And, and, you know, I think that you had mentioned that, that, that mental health was something that you wanted to focus on today. Yeah. Josh. And I think that this might be a good segue. So I, th I think that, you know, mental yeah. health, mental health challenges were around before all this, but, yeah, but now have, they're amped up, have definitely been multiplied and complicated for many by the situation, um, that we're in kind of globally and especially nationally right now so um you know the, the the floor is yours man what did you want to talk about well um well so i know um for fact when we're talking about uh, mental health things like uh, depression and things like that 
I know I like since like before 2020, I didn't really like get depressed. I mean, I get obviously like anyone else, I get upset, I get like angry, I get annoyed. Um, but uh, then you know, 2020 came and gave us all those wonderful gifts like lockdown and stuff. And so it kind of it amped up things, kind of like um, like boosted stuff. So I felt myself I get I get now depression and stuff. And I also I find that it's not just me because as I talk to lots of people I know, my friends, I, they like they tell me like lots of times in private because there's a stigma about like depression and like especially like this is particularly with guys that like depression is weakness depression. Which I honestly I think that's a really stupid stigma. I I use the word stupid intentionally, but um I think it's a stupid stigma. But so they pull me aside privately and they tell me, hey, you know, I get this, I get that. And well, honestly, why they randomly tell me this, to be honest, I don't know. I really don't know. I just people usually just tell me things, but um I it's all good. So the so and I find it more and more people kind of just telling me this, and I see like this is a this is a thing like lots of guys because it's always the guys who are telling me this stuff. Lots of guys who I come across with at least half of my friends now, and the people I associate with even online, are going through this depression, and this it was never like this before lockdown. It was never like this. So. I know during depression, you because often um people feel alone, people feel that, and it's that really the self isolation which gets can, you. Can, no? can I? Yeah, but can I? Can I just kind of? Yeah. Be devil's advocate here and just kind of push back on a little bit of what you said. So I think that, you know, it's kind of like diagnostic criteria. How you get diagnosed with autism historically, uh, it's like four times as many. Uh, females uh, males than females that get diagnosed with autism but now they're seeing that autism presents itself in a different way in females that they have uh, a, a higher ability maybe to mask or there's more societal pressure to cover it up or it's just called emotion they're emotional whatever i think similarly for mental health issues that might be a thing and that might be why you why you notice that it's a lot of guys i yeah. would never i would never want to discount Oh or, no! Never. Or say that it's not a a a crisis for no matter how you identify as far as oh yeah gender. of course um and and no, also I just mean by the it, people coming to me it could just be that guys consider guys you know often guys consider guys more approachable and maybe uh your female friends are talking to your other female friends about it um so you know I'd be careful to say that it's just this crisis affecting men i mean it is an interesting thing to think about and to flesh out and talk about um but yeah i definitely think that more and more people are having struggles but i also think yeah i also think that more and more people are disclosing to each other what their challenges are and i think that that's so so important to promote definitely. a more inclusive and empathetic and understanding world you know what i mean yeah, but the stigma with like everyone with depression, the reason, like I said before, it's stupid is because think about it. And when you think about it like this, if your whole beyond this type of stigma is going to change. If you break, um, if you like rip a muscle in your body, the muscle is like an organ. You have an internal injury, then you go to a doctor, whatever, you get it taken care of. If people say, what's wrong with your arm? You're not going to be like, oh, nothing's wrong with my arm because it, uh, like I, I messed up my muscle. I ripped the muscle, whatever. Another internal organ, it, your brain. It's not located in your arm. It's located in your head. You have something and you're like, oh, no, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. It's the same thing. You, you got hurt here. You have, you're having hardships up there. But... One, there's a stigma saying, no, if I disclose this, I'm weak. If I disclose this, you know, um, I'm vulnerable. The other, it's just, oh, yeah, I got hurt, blah, blah, blah. I really think that this, out of all the stigmas, and I, I disagree with lots of stigmas, pretty much all of them, but this one is just dumb because it's just the different part of the body. That's it. You have, um, you're hurting in your arm. You're hurting in your mind. 
so. So I think that Sigma, it's just, it turns out it's dangerous because it keeps people like bottling things up. And, um, you know, if you bottle things up, that, that's never good. It's like shaking a thing of soda. Eventually it's going to like burst out of the bottle. Yeah, uh, I like yeah. that. So I, I, th- I think that you're, you're making a, a couple of good points here, Josh. And I, I think that where a lot of that comes from though, all the, all these behaviors and these thought processes, whether they're like, you know, kind of group thought or individual thought processes have a root. Right. And I think that when you break your arm, people can see it. They see your arms broken. They see the cast. You can't physically do certain things. And there's other things that are invisible challenges, invisible disabilities um, that potentially you could be, lying about or exaggerating about or using to your advantage or something like that. Also, there's a lot of mystery there. A broken arm is a broken arm. What can't you do? Well, I can't do gym class. What can't you do? I can't drive for a couple of months. With mental health issues and things going on in the brain, there are people with bipolar disorder or depression that can work. There are people that that's it's too debilitating and they need to be on disability. There are people that can have functional relationships and there are people that find that really challenging it's not a broken arm it's something with a lot of nuance and a lot of mystery so i think that that tends to make a lot of people on the outside nervous because they don't know what that means it's not a broken arm it goes beyond that um and unless you karate chop someone's broken arm you're not going to make it any worse as long as you're giving them the autonomy to decide what they're comfortable doing and what they're not. But with mental health issues, people tend to walk on eggshells, get uncomfortable. And that's why it becomes stigmatizing because it could be extremely alienating to disclose this kind of thing. Um, But that is why everyone needs to disclose their stuff. That's why everyone needs to display empathy and understanding for when someone does disclose their stuff, no matter what their stuff is whether they have a prosthetic leg or they are a recovering alcoholic or they have bipolar disorder or they have autism or they have ADHD or dyslexia. Um, I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying no matter what, every single person should disclose everything because it is nuanced and complicated. Um, But I think that that is what's going to make it better. And I'm not just talking about our inclusion allies and the people that make a career and a life out of doing the stuff that you and I do. I'm talking about everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah and it's also, it's, a, it's really, it's a sign of strength also, because like, if you have the strength to do that, I mean, you are capable of doing way more than you, you'd imagine you're able to, because lots of times online, on like social media and stuff, I'll see these, like, they're not memes, but like motivational things going around saying, if you have the strength to sit alone in a restaurant, you could do anything. Well, and I, I've done that quite a lot. And I mean, at first it's hard, but let me tell you something. It's much harder to like get on a big podcast and say, oh, you know, well, I suffer from depression. But if you're able to do that, if you're able to even tell one person, you are much stronger than you give yourself credit for because you're doing something which, let's say, 10 other people could not do. And by doing that, you are helping at least two of them see that it is possible and then they can do it. Then when each of them do it, it's going to be so on and so forth. You know, mm-hmm. so this is really it's it's a, again the reason it's a stupid stigma is because it's actually the opposite. It is a sign of strength, and I really think, especially now as um mental health and neural neurodiversity and all that are coming more into like the mainstream of society and acceptance, that um it is eventually within I think probably next within five years is going to be mainstream that that stigma is gone and it's a sign of strength. I really do believe that because that's, it looks like that's where we're heading as a society, Mm -hmm. at least in America. I'm not, I can't say that about the whole, every other country because I don't really know every other country's social norms. So if you're listening to this in a country outside of the United States, this may not be applicable to you yet, but um, yeah, for, for, for our friends in the United States, um, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. I mean, you look even, Look at uh, entertainment, for example. And uh, entertainment is why I find the most powerful source for social change because that's where you really take in information. Uh, what are some of those popular shows? Uh, Atypical is one of them. Everything's going to be okay. And they all have a common theme, and that is inclusion and acceptance, right? 
And you look at the ratings. The ratings are great. They have a huge following. Uh, and social media, everything. And they're produced by um, everything except okay, it's on Hulu, which I believe Disney owns. Um, and Netflix is atypical. And those are two huge, like huge, huge companies. So if they're pouring money into it, it's they see a trend because you know companies, yeah, they, they yeah, they may have like a corporate social responsibility, but they're not gonna pour millions and millions and millions of dollars in something they do not see a profit coming from because mm-hmm. they're not charities. Trust Mickey Mouse is not a charitable mouse. Okay. I love Disney. I love Mickey Mouse. Oh boy. Um yeah. oh boy. Um Bob Chapek, please don't sue me. But um the, at the end of the day, he's not a charitable mouse. He's doing Netflix. He's only doing this because he knows he's getting cheddar at the end because this is a societal trend and this is a very good trend. Mm-hmm. So just as, yeah. That, that being said, the landscape of um, the kind of, not just the kind of media that's being produced or the kind of conversations nationally and internationally that are being had about this stuff, um, that, that's not the only thing changing, but also the way that you can get help is changing. And I just want to say, we probably should have said this in the beginning, disclaimer, Josh and I are not mental health experts. We're not clinicians. No, no, no. Um, but we have been through a lot and helped people through a lot. Um, but there are a lot of resources and a few of which I'd like to, I'd like to mention an obvious one for both Josh and I, and many people we know is to start moving around physically, get exercise, get outside, go for a walk. Any little bit helps, but a lot of it helps a lot of it. Um, yeah. and, and that's, that is the best medicine that I can think of. Um, but also the way people are getting help formally from clinicians and things is different now. Um, not for everybody, but there are a lot of remote and online resources, including, um, betterhelp.com and Talkspace, which is, you know, virtual, um, virtual therapy. And, um, it, it's, it, you know, only a couple years ago when it started 10, 10 years ago, it was like such a novel idea. And now when you think about it, you think about how many things you do virtually and the reason why you might want to do that virtually, those resources are really important to a lot of people because they don't want to leave the house because they are depressed because um, for whatever reason. Also, now that I live in a more remote area and I say Nashville, but I really live outside Nashville, there's a really big lack of proper services, both mental health services and other clinical services for, you know, neurodiverse people. Um, And I know this because we know people who need those services. Um, So remote remote services are an option. They're an option for everybody and they might be a little bit more accessible to you either with your level of comfort and also just your physical access to these services. It's right, you know, at your fingertips. Um, I, I also want to throw this out there, something which has personally helped me. And I'm just saying this has helped me personally a lot. Uh, well, when I like, let's say I come across a problem, I, um, I always find this need like, either even when I'm depressed, not deep in depression, but either like early or late to um, try to find my out information because I have this obsessive need to understand why things are happening. I always have. Uh, for example, you know, as a little child, when I was in elementary school, middle school, when the teacher gave me a role or an assignment and I did not understand why, I just literally, and I do not suggest anyone do this, disobeyed the rule. Hence, I was usually the kid who always got sent to the principal's office. But with that being said, uh, I look up, like, let's say on social media, I don't have a Facebook, but I have an Instagram. I look up different, um, like, depression help pages and stuff, and I look up different patterns. I see, oh, this is what I'm thinking. I don't think this, but, oh, this is happening. Oh, this is happens. And, like, I kind of figure out, and that's how I kind of figure out that it truly is depression because I saw, like, all the certain signs. I was matching things up. I was like, oh, this is exactly it. This is exactly it oh, I don't get this one, but I get this one. So if you can, I, or you try to take an issue and really look and try, I find it helps me personally to try to figure things out or at least understand. And then you see how many people like that page and how many comments and you're like, wow, this is a really big deal. Like lots of people get this. And you see this, they're like, 
thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, like per page and stuff. Like it's crazy. Uh, so, and that really helps at least you know because since human beings are like group animals, we we um, we have a social. Uh, seeing those numbers and then knowing, hey, I'm not alone. That that helps. Mm-hmm. Even in the smallest level, it will do some help, unless you're ultra antisocial. <laughs> Um, in which case, just finding information may help. And for me, seeing the numbers help also. And uh, really, that that does change a lot. At least, at least in my case. I'm, but if if you want to try it, though, I, it has helped me a lot. So force yourself to try. It. I know it's hard when you're in that. I do, and I am not downplaying that at all. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Um, but if if you can, if you have the mental capacity at the moment, uh, try to take initiative in searching for answers to things which may confuse you about thought process or something. Um, they really will open up doors you didn't even know were there. And then let's say you say, hey, look, this and there's a therapy. I didn't know there's a therapy which covers just that. Well, now you have that information because you took the initiative and then you can get better help. You can get better resources, but you have to, in order to get better with anything, the thing is you have to want to. Like help is not going to just, there's not like a fairy which just goes to fly in and say, hey, I'm going to help you. You need to look for that fairy. That fairy doesn't come looking for you. You need to look for that fairy and make it work. But I'm telling you, if you do look for that fairy, if you find that fairy, it will work. But you mm-hmm. got to do the work. You got to look. That's the thing. So you got to engage. So you you got to find that, you, let's say you're in a really bad day. Okay, maybe that's not the day, but eventually you need to engage. And, and trust me, it, it does help. Awesome. I think you hit the nail on the head. That's really, really good. Um, so I we sh- maybe we should have addressed in the beginning, but I just want to say, um, you know, this season is supposed to be where we're stopping at different places every month. Oh yeah. Uh, sometimes, that. sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't, but this, this month, Josh just wanted to make sure he was getting this message out there. So, um, and I do think that it's important that every once in a while we have, uh, just kind of a, a powwow about, about what's going on and what, you know, what we think that people should hear. So great idea. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed for next month, but next month we are going to be stopping in a really, really exciting, um, social enterprise. And Do you uh, get his and, ums. Do you get his ums. Just want you to get that. We're going to be stopping in Missouri next month. So I'm really excited about that. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we could not wrap up an episode without a shameless product plug. Now, as you can see watching YouTube, but if you're listening to this, I will go into nice, great detail to explain what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a nice black cap with a beautifully imported Sound Psych Autism logo right on the front. This is beautiful white stitching right over here. By the way, embroidered by people on the spectrum, produced by people on the spectrum at Spectrum Designs Foundation. All the stuff we make is produced by people on the autism spectrum. And I'm wearing a beautiful army green t-shirt with um, screen printed on it, also our logo. Again, when you buy from us, you are also supporting autism employment. So uh, you are listening to an autism podcast, getting some cool autism merch, showing your support for an autism podcast, and also helping autism um, employment. That's a lot of good things for autistic people. So if you want to feel good about yourself and know you're helping others, you know there's a great way to do it, to buy some Sounds Like Autism stuff. So you can go to soundtakeautism.com and find all the stuff right there. That is the only place to buy authentic Sounds Like Autism merchandise. Yeah, not that not that bootleg stuff that you can get somewhere else, right? Great plug, Josh. Thank you so much. So that's www.soundslikeautism.com uh, and just yep. click, click on shop. And uh, that order will be produced and fulfilled and shipped out by the incredible employees from uh, Spectrum Designs Foundation and the participants from the Nicholas Center. So thank you uh, to both organizations for doing that. And uh, thank you in advance for ordering all of our stuff. Yeah, thank you very much. And you all have a great one and we'll see you next time. See you in Missouri.